The Manaslu Circuit is a trek in Nepal which reaches an altitude of 5,100 meters at Lark Pass, through the base of Mount Manaslu, the eighth highest mountain in the world. These unspoiled mountain valleys feature a mix of raw Himalayan nature and ancient Buddhist culture, with Manaslu and Sum Valley offering the most striking and jaw-dropping scenery of the entire Himalayas. You don't have to look far to find reports that overcrowding is a growing issue, both on Mount Everest and other classic trails in Nepal. However, the Manaslu and Sum Valley remain off the beaten path and are among the least crowded treks in the western region of Gorkha, Nepal. The trek also offers a lot more side trips than any other base camp, although the majority of visitors would only explore the Manaslu circuit. However, with a pre-planned nest adventure, the team in Kathmandu has made it possible to explore the Himalayan landscapes and Buddhist culture of Manaslu with an additional side trip to Tsum Valley. My name's Laura. My name's Ben. And we're from Wisconsin in the United States. We're on our honeymoon, celebrating our marriage by taking a 20-day trek through the Himalayas with a nest adventure. Such a journey begins at Sorikola. It is about eight to nine hours of adventure on a local bus to get to the trailhead via the mud-caked and dusty roads between Kathmandu and Arugat. We uh, actually went the private Jeep route, which you can either do public or private. We decided to do private, um, just to save ourselves a little bit of time. The first couple hours is on paved road, and then after that, there's maybe like five hours of just like dirt road that you're traveling through. Yep, very bumpy. First day, stayed in a wonderful little hotel next to a rushing river and uh, got some of the best sleep in, in a long time. Just with the, the river in the background, the white noise is absolutely wonderful. The first two days of the trek are among the most dramatic and picturesque days in the low alpine green valley below 2,000 meters. The route encompasses both Hindu and Buddhist cultures. As you hike through rice paddies, green terraces, and across several hanging bridges, the roar of mountain rivers and waterfalls will have your adrenaline pumping. The first couple of days is a little bit rough trail from the road construction, mm -hmm. yep. but not too bad. We really just followed the river valley. Um, there are, you know, beautiful mountain views the entire time you're walking. You kind of hug the river. Um, you zigzag back and forth the river. After we have checked our permits in Jagat, we are headed northeast where a group of Tibetan Nepalese live in an area called Sum Valley. The trip to Sum Valley had a lot of up and down. But really manageable. We had a porter with us. They practice their own ancient form of dialect, art, culture, and religion. The trails are strewn with artistic chortons and lined with many walls made from thousands of stone slabs engraved with depictions of deities and inscribed with prayers. With its peaceful tenets of nonviolence, in Buddhist culture, killing animals, even for ritual purposes, is not permitted, nor is the trade of meat. Third day of the Sum Valley, the whole valley opens up and it's just wide open plain. The valley is thus uniquely rich in wildlife, especially the Himalayan thar and blue sheep, which congregate in herds of up to 50 to 200. 
Surrounded by the snow-capped Mount Ganesh Himal, towering at over 7,400 meters, the valley further boasts unique and historic monasteries. These include the Rashangumba and Mugumba, where hikers can experience a cultural night, sharing the same space with Buddhist monks. We were very fortunate to uh, overlap with the festival, and uh, we were able to see some really wonderful Tibetan culture. There was dancing, there was uh, a fair amount of monk meditation and chanting. And yeah, we just really loved the Tibetan culture the entire time we were in the Sun Valley. They're wonderful people, um, and were nice enough to uh, open up their homes and, and uh, really make us feel welcome. After the Sum Valley, our journey will take us to the other part of Manaslu, even closer to the Tibetan border, Lark Pass. We get up to elevation, so I believe in Sum Valley we were between 3,400 meters and 3,700 meters, depending on where we were. Um, but that was a really nice way for us to get acclimated because when we went back down and got linked back up with the Manaslu circuit, uh, we pretty quickly got back up into elevation. The nature is wonderful. I mean, this is, like I've said it already, but some of the best nature we've ever seen, if not the best. There's a little less people in Sun Valley trekking wise so it feels a little more calm and that you have the mountainside to yourself. About 1,000 people living in the old village of Samagon spend their days over 3,500 meters above sea level and enjoy some of the most incredible mountain views in the world. As we kind of moved up in elevation, um, our days kind of got shorter, mm -hmm. which was really nice. It, it helped the acclimation process. Here we start to feel the altitude with the thin air and freezing temperatures at night. The villagers are critically dependent on their annual harvest, growing only buckwheat, potatoes, wheat, and beans in this frigid climate. The only cash income that they earn to send their kids to school is from tourism. The plan is to spend the next two days acclimatizing in Samagon and Samdo before heading into the high altitudes of Lark Pass. We had a choice to either go back that same way to do Manaslu Base Camp or we went to the monastery. Mm -hmm. We chose the monastery um, just because we'd heard it was better views. That was the easy choice for us. We were told that this part of the Manaslu is the most exciting and best part of our trip, which we begin as our initial side trip comes to a close. You hike up to the, uh, you know, 300 or so meters into the mountains and it just opens up into this big valley. You have the lake on one side and then just surrounded by mountain views. Yeah, it was one of my favorite days, I think. Yeah, I With agree. really nice views coming down.
at Samagon, where we stayed, you see the Manaslu Mountain off to one side. And so it was really wonderful to be able to wake up for sunrise. On this trip, we heard from the Nest Adventure Office in Kathmandu that it was going to snow in the next few days. We still had six more days before reaching our high points, and most likely, we would be heading for the high pass around the time of the snowfall. The high pass is normally only snowbound between December and February, but heavy snowfall could be dangerous any time of the year there. Dharmasala sits at around 4,460 meters of altitude, making this the highest point at which we have slept yet before our final push to Lark Pass. I mean, you're truly in the mountains at Dharmasala. You're, you're surrounded by snow-capped peaks and uh, just a really beautiful spot. The next morning from Dharmasala, uh, we woke up around 3.45 in the morning and uh, ate our breakfast and then got started hiking over the pass, which was, you know, probably my favorite day. Dealing with light headaches and nausea, we finally reached the pass at 5,100 meters. We are lucky enough to experience only a light snow, making the trail even more dramatic. The early sunrise hike from above the clouds is one of the most spectacular we have ever seen. It took us about four hours to get to the pass. We mm -hmm. go from 4,400 meters to 5,160. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty gradual uphill. Uh, yeah, just really beautiful. You can see the glacier ice off to your left the whole time you're hiking. And you keep going past and at that point you're pretty close up to the Snow Peak Mountains and um, there's just beautiful range after beautiful range the whole time you're hiking. Yeah, every direction. Every direction, yep. Complete panorama. All that is left now is to drop 1,400 meters straight down to Bimtang. I think we finished the, the past day in about eight hours, probably about eight and a half hours, um, which included a tea and noodle soup break. After almost five days with no showers, here at last was our chance to soak ourselves in glorious hot water. We stayed one night in Bimtang, and then this morning we got up, hiked back the direction we came a little bit to Punkar Lake. Yeah, beautiful spot. Yeah. So we got to appreciate the views that we got yesterday a little bit longer, mm -hmm. and then uh, you can see the mountain reflection in the lake. Yeah, it's a beautiful little glacier lake that's down in a valley, and so none of the wind was touching it, and it was reflecting like glass. We're going to start hike down to Goa, uh, which takes us down about a thousand meters. And from Goa, we'll hike down to Besi Sahar. As we descended further, we passed through nature's most spectacular garden, a beautiful and serene rhododendron woodland colored by pines and magnolia trees. In the spring, the whole area becomes a natural flower bed with flowers in full bloom from March till May. Soon after this, we reach Darapani, where we connect with local transportation and make our way to Kathmandu. Or onto the Annapurna circuit if you wish to take the trek even further. After a long journey of about 19 days in the Himalayas, we have some spare days left in Kathmandu. We use them to explore some of the most iconic world heritage sites in the city and all of Nepal, before we call off to our home sweet home. No doubt this hike was among the best we have ever done, and we owe that to the friendly people who live in this beautiful country. 
One of the cool things I like about Nest is the guy who started it is it was actually a reporter and guide himself, so he knows what it takes to pull off a hike, and he also has a lot of respect for the people working for him, so I think that's a, a good thing to look for in a company. Thanks as well to Nest Adventure who made this trip possible, arranging one of the best local guides who has explored Manaslu over 45 times. Prakash has excellent communication skills, and he is trustworthy, fun, and kind. His local knowledge was second to none, and he had all the contacts at the best tea houses and knew the best photography spots. We were blown away by the service in Alita, then even more so on the actual trek. At the end of our journey, we found out that more and more trekkers are being drawn to the mystery that this region has to offer, and we encourage you to discover it for yourself. You have the choice there to go up to the monastery or go to Manaslu. No. No. Damn. no I don't. After we went up to a lake that's kind of on the way to Manaslu Base Camp. That is called Virendra Lake. Bindra? Virendra. Vin Virendra. 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 Virendra Lake. Virendra. Yeah, in Samagong, uh, the place we stayed uh, had an observation deck up over the uh, guest house, and so we saw this beautiful sunrise over Manaslu, where you could see the monastery that we hiked to the day before, up on the hill, and then the sun rose. Are you talking about in low? Also from low. That's from low. <laughs> like, not, not, uh, like before, this time is better. Yeah. Harvest. yeah. Okay. And, and I'm just going to say, bring a gun to murder the dog, <laughs> so that you get a good night's sleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. You know, at 4,400 meters, it was one of the best meals we've had. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. It was, it was a very good meal. Yeah. Uh,